Maria Oteres. I think her name sounds like Spanish or Portuguese. <laughs> but uh, she is, uh, I can give you the name later. She is presently the US Special Coordinator for Tibetan Affairs. Secondly, there is a, the Congress has legislated a Tibet Policy Act. And this Tibet Policy Act uh, obligates the US American, uh, American government to, uh, to assist the Tibetan refugee communities. Uh, in various ways. Uh, thirdly, because of the strong support uh, in the Congress, there are uh, two radio broadcasts in America. The Radio Free Asia has a Tibetan section which broadcasts in, in Tibetan language 24 hours. Voice of America has a Tibetan section which broadcasts 24 hours in Tibetan language. And this broadcast also, uh, they broadcast also to Tibet. So Tibetans inside Tibet uh, uh, have also updated information about the outside world. Although the Chinese government is doing everything possible to gain the broadcast, but still, many Tibetans manage to listen to the radio broadcast. So there are, uh, these are very important uh, uh, political acts and, and contributions to the, Tibetan, uh, to the Tibetan community and Tibetan uh, refugees, uh, refugees. So I wouldn't say uh, the American administration is not doing anything on Tibet. Of course, uh, the meeting between President Obama and uh, His Holiness Dalai Lama is very, very important. Uh, the reason is the Chinese government has exerted tremendous pressure on the American government, even ex expressed threats to the American government but President Obama did not give in to these pressures and uh, threats. That message is also very, very important uh, to, the, to the world, that there are issues and occasions where uh, principled democracies cannot give in to the pressure of a, of a totalitarian state. If it comes to the to the basic values for which this democracy stand for, so I think uh, uh, the, that uh, that the meeting took place sends a very strong signal to the to the international community. Uh, secondly, President Obama has made also very clear that he considers the Dalai Lama or the White House spokesperson has made clear that President Obama is meeting the Dalai Lama, among others, also as a spokesperson for Tibetan rights. That means uh, President Obama is meeting the Dalai Lama not only as a religious and, uh, uh, leader, but also in the capacity because he considers the Dalai Lama as a spokesperson for Tibetan rights. And this is also important for us. Thirdly, after the meeting, the White House issued a statement, written statement, which, uh, st uh, which states explicitly that President Obama supports the Dalai Lama's military approach in solving the final resolution to the Tibetan issue. And this uh, explicit support for the approach of the Dalai Lama is also very important. So from our point of from the Tibetan point of view, this meeting is very important, significant, and uh, uh, will have impact in the long run.
It's a follow-up. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I was referring to the fact that uh, President Obama didn't receive uh, the Dalai Lama uh, one year earlier, um, maybe not to uh, bother the um, Chinese authorities uh, prior to his summit with uh, the Chinese president in Beijing. Uh, it was the first president for many years that didn't receive uh, the Dalai Lama in the beginning of his uh, tenure of his uh, uh, Didn't that signal the interest of um, President Obama in not uh, uh, forcing um, the Tibetan issue with the okay. Chinese authorities? It's okay. true that uh, last October, when His Holiness the Dalai Lama was in Washington, D.C., uh, President Obama and His Holiness the Dalai Lama did not meet. However, uh, people need to know the background story to that uh, issue. In 2009, the, the White House has been in constant touch with us Tibetans uh, and His Holiness the, His Holiness the Dalai Lama's special envoy in Washington DC had many, many meetings with officials in the White House and in these meetings they discussed uh, the possibility and the best way when a meeting between President Obama and his Holiness should take place. <coughs> now, in these discussions, there were different points of view. One point of view was President Obama, it is better for the relation for the US China relationship as well as uh, the position of the, uh, President Obama in doing something tangible on the Tibetan issue by not meeting with His Holiness before his visit to China takes place. So there were this kind of views. Then, then some other people who thought President Obama should meet which is holiness in October. So there were different views. Because of the different views, President Obama sent one of his closest, closest and senior advisor, uh, Valerie Jarrett. She is considered as a, fan, as a member of the Obama family and a very long time friend of President Obama from, uh, from his Chicago town. So President Obama sent Valerie Jarrett with a delegation all the way to Dharamsala to India to meet with His Holiness Dalai Lama and to discuss with His Holiness about these different views. And His Holiness the Dalai Lama immediately agreed it is better, better for, uh, for President Obama first to go to China and then uh, meet with him. Mm -hmm. For two reasons, His Holiness considers good relationship between U.S. and China of uh, extreme importance. Secondly, His Holiness the Lama did also not want to, because of our relationship with China, did not want to provoke also the Chinese side and show considerations for the, uh, for the situation of the Chinese leaders. So there, it was a good will on the part of His Holiness and President Obama not meeting in October, but unfortunately this gesture of good will was not appreciated on the part of the Chinese